the Cornish weather is doing what Cornish weather does best. I'm wearing the waterproofs. Today I'm going to be heading into Storm Agnes, so it might get a bit wet and windy. I'm here at St Ustall. I'm visiting every station in Cornwall, and today I'm heading up to Newquay on the Atlantic coastline. I need to head from here at St Ustall over to Par, then I can jump on some trains up on the branch line. I'm looking forward to ending my day in Newquay. This weather is very different to the first three episodes, but it's fine. When you're in Cornwall, you have to expect many different kinds of weather. This is, just like the sun, also Cornish weather. So St Ustall and the wider area here is really no, well known for its china clay. I'm not a clay expert, so I'm just gonna hazard a guess that's a good thing. Also, beer experts tell me that St Ustall Brewery is a really good brewery. I'm also not a brewery expert or a beer expert, so I've just gotta take a word on that one. No matter where I go, I just can't get away from Voyagers, can I? That Voyager has delayed my train, which is going to take me to par. Currently, I'm going to make my connection. If it gets much later, I'm not going to. With it being a free hourly service on the line up to Newquay, I don't fancy mix missing that connection. OK, here, it's almost like they just gave up restoring the canopy. The next train to arrive at Central 2 will be the 09 46 Great Western Railway service to Cardiff Central via Bristol Temple Link. The next station is Park. I didn't realise they ran IETs on the Penzance to Cardiff services. I was expecting a clapped out old banker. So I really don't have long here at Par. I've got to jump straight on to that train to my next station. So this network around here used to be a whole network of railways dedicated to transporting china, clay, tin, everything like that. It was the Cornwall Minerals Railway and various other tramways, etc. There was a lot going on around here. Roach is a request stop and then I'm going for a walk from there. and the train just turned itself off. So the weather on this trip has just been on a par with all my other trips to Cornwall. Right, I've made it to Roch Station. It's getting very windy here now. The station itself is actually about a mile north of the village of Roch. The station is in the hamlet of Victoria. Now, if you're familiar with driving to Cornwall in like the 90s, you'll be very familiar with, with Victoria, a notorious bottleneck on the A30 where it went across Gosmore. Back in 2006, Gosmore was completely bypassed and the nature reserve. Oh, the wind is doing camera things. This is not going to be fun. Gosmore was completely bypassed in 2006. The old road is now a walking and cycling route and it will handily get me to St Columb Road. That's quite a long walk, so wish me luck. And I think the technical term is windy AF. If you're wondering how I've got Costa, we'll call it the power of editing. This is the old A30. This used to be a really major chunk route. Like, me standing in the middle of this would not have been a very good idea. Here's a level crossing. And I'm going to walk that way over Gosmore 
and eventually get to St Columb Road. Oh look, they put this handy little log here on the side of the old A30. It's almost like it's time for me to say a massive thank you to my lovely Patreons who have brought me to Cornwall. They are scrolling on screen right now and they really stepped up with the sport to make this happen. I am so, so thankful to them for Cornwall. If you want to get your name onto the list of scrolling on screen right now, the links to do so are in the description. You can help me make more videos like this. Thank you guys. Anyway, I should carry on walking. I might actually need my bag. It's just strange to think that less than 20 years ago, this very tarmac was taking cars to and from Cornwall to the rest of the country. I've been stuck in many a traffic jam here myself. The big road that replaced this is a new dual carriageway to the north of Goss Moor, and that took this road out of the nature reserve. And I think most of the people who would normally oppose road schemes actually saw this as a positive one for that very reason. I think my inner road geek is coming back out here, isn't it? But these are the bits that I love, the bits of our historical network that there's still evidence of, the changes that we made, in this case, in my opinion, for the better. I'm not sure walking two miles across Goss Moor, when Storm Agnes is meant to be hitting us about now, is a great life choice. But it hasn't started raining yet. It's just really windy. And I don't think the storm's gonna really turn into much, to be honest. I have hot-footed it to the shelter because the rains have come. So in the grand scheme of the timeline of this trip, today is the day after I did the big walk with Stu. Um, I walked with him from Hale to Penzance. He obviously walked from Paddington to Penzance, which was immense. If you haven't supported him already, I'll leave a link down there. Drop a few quid for his cause, he's doing it for the Samaritans. My legs are feeling it a bit today. I'm not used to walking that much in one go. It's been about a year and a half since surgery and it's taken me a while to actually build up to prolonged lengths of like walking and stuff. I didn't want to include it in the video I did about the day because I didn't want to take anything away from him. I think I had a moment and realised that was the longest I've walked in a single walking trip since surgery. And yeah, I just had a moment about that. I mean, I've walked longer in a day before, but not in one go. I'm getting there. Maybe one day I'll do a park run. Things you're probably never going to see. And it is amazing just how much nature has taken over this alignment now. So when you take humans out of the equation, nature will win. The old road used to head off down that way to pick up the Indian Queens bypass. I need to go over the bridge to not walk on the Indian Queens bypass because that would be a terrible life choice. But that is where the old A30 used to go and where the old Indian Queens bypass used to start, which was 1995. And I remember that being built as well. This walking is making me warm. I'm on the other side of the A30 now. This bit of the old A30 was actually bypassed in 1995. Nature's very much taking it back. Where the road now turns left, this used to just go straight on, onto Goss Moor. I remember as a kid, when we were coming back through here, we would be on this, on this road because it hadn't been bypassed at that point. And one of the things we used to do was stop at Gnome World. I'm curious if it's still there. It's still there. There seems to be a lot less gnomes than back in the day though. I think they've scaled back the gnomes. Okay, so just coming up to St. Cullum Road now. It does not feel like the most welcoming of stations. I think I'm going the right way. Really not obvious. Okay, so between this badly parked Range Rover and this badly parked lorry, you can just see in the hedges a brown sign that says we are going the right way. I don't think many people use this station. <laughs> Quite a sizable village though.
It is very, very exposed here at St. Columb Road. The wind is very much doing hair things to my hair. So it's a single platform station like all the others on this line. But there is very, very obviously an old second platform there. Was this like a passing loop back in the day? So just to the east of here is a disused toll dish tunnel. That's been disused since 1874 when this line, which was previously a tramway, was taken over by the Cornwall Minerals Railway. That's a mouthful when it's windy. Uh, the tunnel wasn't big enough for standard gauge trains, so they built a line around it instead. That, line, that tunnel now sits abandoned. At some point on this trip, I might see if I can get down there and see if there's anything that can be seen. So I did just try and get to one of the portals of the Toldish Tunnel, but Bloody Farmer has blocked access. Meant to be a public footpath. Positives, this has a shelter which is good considering how exposed to the elements this station is. Negatives, it has no glass. It's pretty useless as a shelter, I've got to say. So I've just heard a train horn in the distance. The level crossing barriers are lowering. That must mean my train is coming soon. Next time, I get some company as I continue my journey to Nuki. But for now, I'm going to leave a link on the screen to the next video that I think you should watch. Until next time, bye bye.